I'm here overlooking what used to be a frantic trading floor for the city firm Salomon Brothers. Today, it's home to the journalists of The Telegraph, just one of the innumerable changes to a swept finance in recent years. None of those changes, however, will have been as big as that set to be unleashed by financial technology, fintech as it's known. Across London and beyond, a dynamic host of digital companies is set to challenge the stranglehold that big banks have on your finances. From current accounts to mortgages, from investments to currency exchange, companies like Monzo, Revolut, Transferwise and Starling Bank are making finance seem cool and using word of mouth to inspire almost cultish devotion. Monzo alone has half a million customers, despite only getting its full banking license last year. From 2012 to 2017, consumer use across all banking apps increased by 356%. Traditional banks are really feeling the pressure. In the two years between 2015 and 2017, more than a thousand branches on the high street in the UK closed. Everything is available, accessible and customizable at the touch of a button. To find out more about what this revolution might mean for you, I spoke to the boss of one of London's hottest fintech insurgents, Anne Bowden, at Starling Bank. Anne Bowden, thank you so much for welcoming us to Starling Bank. Here we are. Um, for those of us who have no idea at all, what exactly is fintech? Oh, mm, fintech. Well, fintech is all about finance and technology. Um, I've been in finance and technology now for 30 odd years, uh, but only now it's really, really considered the place to be. So, um, for the first time, my job is considered sexy by the industry. <laughs> <laughs> but what can fintech do that, you know, Lloyds can't do or, or Barclays or these big established players on the high street? Well, what we're doing is bringing new technology and new innovation to the finance industry for the first time. Banks have been doing the same thing in roughly the same way for a long time. And people changed the way they were buying music or um, by using iTunes. They changed the way they bought everything else in their life by using Amazon. Nobody had really changed the way they bought financial products. And the fintech industry listens to what customers want and innovates and creates and delivers products which are very, very different. So for instance, Starling Bank, no bricks. I can't walk into a Starling Bank branch somewhere on my high street, can I? No, but you can interact with Starling on your smartphone you know, sort of five times, ten times a day. So we're far more um, close to our customers than many of the traditional banks. Um, our customers open the app, they take away interesting information about their spending. And each time they make a payment, they have a notification of some sort that adds something special, something um, interesting about the way they're running their financial life. Is that something that can make London a fintech centre of the world. This is where finance and technology get together. Um, it's not going to happen in Silicon Valley. You know, you don't have the finance industry infrastructure there. It's not going to happen in New York. It's going to happen here. And at the moment, fintech, well, it's transforming industries here and it's doing some very interesting stuff. Things like overdrafts. Um, you can go on your Starling app and you can say, I want a bigger overdraft or I want a less of an overdraft by, by moving the slider up and down. No awkward conversations, no um, lots of filling in forms. It's immediate. It happens there and then. It happens on your smartphone. But surely the established players are going to realise the challenge that you and other fintech insurgents pose to them and they're just going to come along with their millions of customers and they're going to crush you, aren't they? They're going to copy us and we can see it now. Most of those banks are actually announcing that they're going to copy people like Starling. And that's fine. Um, what they can't copy is our cost base. Uh, what's unique about fintech is that we create it from new technology. So very, very efficient technology that can scale um, to the millions of customers. Um, we also have cost base, which are very, very tiny. They're technology-based, not people-based. This is a, a question which you've doubtless been asked a thousand times, but here you are, you're in a tech industry, which is notorious for having very few women in it. You're in a finance industry, which is notorious for having very few women in it. You're in an entrepreneurial industry, which is famous, sadly, for having very few women in it. How is it 
to be a woman in a sector where all these three collide? Well, you're right, there's not many of us. Um, I think I've spent my careers in places where there aren't many women. And um, women then have a tough job getting to the top. But when we get there, we're pretty good at our job, we're pretty practiced, and we're pretty resilient. Mm -hmm. And myself and fellow entrepreneurs um, in this industry are determined that we're going to try and change the, um, the financial services industry for the better, and actually try to make this, this industry fairer for all women. Do you think all banks will have to be fintech establishments in the future? I think all banks will have to choose where they're going to put their bets. I think some will decide to exit certain industries where they don't have the competitive advantage. I think banking is all about data. Isn't everything about data these days? Yes. Banks have always been about data. And I think the next revolution is going to be where they have to take that seriously and they have to transform themselves, otherwise they become irrelevant to the consumer. Well, Anne, thanks so much for talking to us here today at Starling Bank. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. The rivalry between the fintech startups and the established big banks will fundamentally change the entire relationship between you and your hard-earned pennies, much as the scrap between low-cost carriers and national airlines change everything about flying. Some of the big beasts will struggle to keep up. Ultimately, they may not survive. But the nimble will thrive, and as they do so, they'll begin to offer myriad services unseen today. Things like deploying artificial intelligence on the ream of financial data created by each and every one of your transactions. Ultimately, however, that's just a new way of doing an old thing, helping you make the most out of your money. <laughs>